tweets because I only see two problems. Number one, they said that, well, just because husbands are abusive and that number two, court process take too long and therefore we think that it's better to have one person consent. We think that's only 5% of all the marriages are abusive in this chair. And we think that's a lot of room for having a couple to be destroyed, right? We told you that there would be paranoia and how their children would think that their parents would wake up one day. And we think that those um, bring more room to like uh, these, these uh, other people to abuse their power. Think about husband who has mistress, uh, mistresses. They might just not renew their marriage license because they just want to go to their mistresses. Think about wife who has a really good deal on a prenuptial agreement. That's why we just want a divorce because they can have money eventually, right? And so those problems about abusive husband uh, will not be really resolved but however be abused. Now, and also, we think that you did not really solve the problem. You have, what if uh, first year of marriage is already abusive? You think that five years, would, uh, you have to wait until five years until for those people to end the marriage. So eventually you still have to rely on the police system. So your mechanism doesn't work at all because eventually you still rely on our mechanism. Secondly, you did not really answer about what the wife would do when they actually not renew and leave the marriage. Just what would be tax the bag and leave, meaning all the money, all the house, all the car will leave to the husband and therefore the wife would only have her clothes on herself, no money to uh, really uh, make her stand for herself, right? And thirdly, we think that justice system is not blind, Mr. Speaker. If countries sign to the Universal Human Rights Declaration, yes, but I learned it in your class, we think that, well, that's non discriminated in the justice system and therefore we think that wife and husband be treated equally with no bias. However, we see that there's more harm under your case and that it destroys the justice system. We give you that you insult religions as well and you not, did not really answer to that, right? Therefore, we think that it's an ineffective, unnecessary mechanism that you had brought out because therefore uh, like the court is not that blind. Anyway, before I move on to my flashes, I need so how exactly does your paradigm actually make those women go to the police in the first place if they're actually reluctant? We think that that uh, encouragement will come by herself. Because we think that if the wife do not have the uh, encouragement to go to the police, they will not have any encouragement to not, re to re to not renew the license. Because we think if the husband is so powerful and he forced her to renew it, she will just renew it as he said so, right? So I have three clashes today. Number one, um, that it's government duty to uplift the marriage value, right? We think that like, we have to tell everyone that the marriage is permanent. Therefore, they have the mentality that if there's little argument coming up, they're trying to work it out anyway. Under your case, when some little argument come up, oh, well, they just say, well, it's Man. going to expire anyway. Therefore, I'm just not going to renew it because marriage is tough. It's just like a toy thing. That that like it's not permanent anyway, so little fight would break the marriage. Well, we think that like uh, I told you many cases as well of how people abuse your system, right? There's a prenuptial agreement that like uh, the wife would take advantage of because the husband is rich, or the husband would just like uh, go to his messages afterwards. As well as mistrust and paranoia in the family that my second speaker come up with. That children would be paranoid that their parents would break up every five years, and that there's mistrust between husband and wife about are you going to renew the marriage or not? Because we think that those trust happens uh, only because they think that marriage is permanent and therefore they're trying to work out the marriage. Second class about like how the status quo is actually work and full time, sorry. Uh, I want to answer to how the system of divorce is actually okay. You said it's wrong and it's need the consent on both places. But we said it's wrong for a reason. We think that we need a third party to actually judge the situation of who's actually the right or the wrong party under this matter, right? And if the wife wins and she can prove that she's really being abused by her husband, she got a lot of benefit from that. The husband might go to jail and she might got a lot of money from him, right? So we think that the wife better go to the law to the go to the system. It's long because they're going to get a free and a fair and more benefit from this lawsuit as well. How can you actually make sure, like, like, okay, abusive wife stay in relationship for some reason, right? Maybe she think that, well, she's dependent, psychologically dependent on this husband. Therefore, a little hurt would not mind. Number two, she might stay because of money. He might be a really wealthy guy. Or number three, she just be a plain masochist. Why would be abused? Who knows, right? So we think, like, government should not interfere in their, any relationship whatsoever because they don't know what actually happening. And therefore, like, you uh, lower the value of my marriage after that. And second point, you said that ha Patricia, that is the society that men have power over women. That's like, okay, we think that 
separation and therefore like uh, their process would be uh, fair for women anyway. So we think there's no real problem, uh, problem over that as well. Well, my third part, we think that this, uh, your government did not answer it as, at all um, about like, how the policies actually in, uh, install religious brutality. We think every religion has a tie to marriage, right? Christianity, uh, you spy in front of God,
it has it has to be this debate. It should not only talk about you see partner and be more than you that. Mm -hmm. That this debate is about marriage in general as well. When we talk about only five percent of all, all marriage is abusing, are they, are you going to torture more than ninety five percent of those normal marriage to be questioning them, to make them question their alert forever? Every five years, when I, I still 65, I have to question in myself that do my partner at the age of 70 will quit me and do I have to die alone at the age I don't want that to happen. I think that when love is actually happening, I don't want any apart. I don't want any people to force me to learn from one lady and gentlemen. Number two, when we talk about society, we think that the, the respondent come from the proposition life is that children already endure in the status quo. But we think that if the children really endure in the status quo, why do we have to push more country to them? Why do we have to push more protection to those children? We, do, we want them to grow up to be a good citizen in the society. We don't want those vulnerable actors to be suffer. We want them to, to have a, a good, ha good family, happy family, and we want that, that, that at the end of the day, those marriage of their, of their parents will not distract them in any way of their living, ladies and gentlemen. Number two, when we also talk about the religion in the society, and we see no response from the government side. When the government side believes that all religions will actually agree to that, that one, two, three, and agree to that policy. But they are basically the imaginary land again, that those, those policies will never be easy to be passed. That those policies will take another like 30, 50 years to be passed. And we, when those happen actually happen, the, um, the idea about helping those of the partner will never come at least in another 50 years. And we think that these problems have to be so far, so we want to make sure that those women have enough courage. We want this problem to end and we want them learn to be um, lasting. Thank the opposition reply, and I invite the government reply. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we need an opposition has been rather ignored because they have never told us on how these women are actually going to change their lives and suddenly go to the police. They simply said encouragement is going to be there on their side. We don't see how that is actually exclusive at all because we think that encouragement was already there in society. We think that we see that these women never went to report to the police in the first place because they are rather reluctant and they don't want their husband to actually know, for example. We don't see how that encouragement is going to exist under their paradigm in the first place because not reporting clearly shows that they don't have courage. But let's look at the even if level. Because even if they have courage, ladies and gentlemen, we do see that divorce never actually ended. Because they, those women still go home with their husband. If we go to the prosecution, if we go to the court, we think that they still have to endure that process. The question is time frame, ladies and gentlemen. We think that when with marriage licenses, what we're actually doing is actually we're protecting the woman and making sure that that marriage is going to end faster. We think that when we go with divorce, when we go to trial, we think that what happens is that we're actually prolonging that marriage and actually making sure that those women are never going to get out. But let's look at the first issue in today's debate. Because let's talk about happy couples, ladies and gentlemen. We still see that our case does not affect those happy couples at all, but actually we're better because we see that we're actually strengthening their relationship by making sure that those licenses are there. When those licenses are there, they're going to see that if they do something wrong, their marriage can easily end. So of course, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to have that clear deterrence to not, to not do something wrong, to not actually physically harm, or actually to not emotionally damage that, um, that partner in the process. We think that this is the clear deterrence and actually making sure that those marriages are going to prosper. We think that that is when marriages are going to prosper because pressure is going to be there for them to actually become a better partner. But let's look at the second issue in today's debate. Because they started talking about how these children are going to be traumatized, ladies and gentlemen. And we think that we already told you that when the problem with divorce is that it always is going to end in unhappy relationships. Because it doesn't mean that those marriages are actually going to end because one person might still want the marriage. And when this happens, we think that we already told you that children are tra traumatized when they see that their parents have unhappy relationships. And we think that unhappy relationships actually fall down under their paradigm when they need the consent of both partners, ladies and gentlemen. When they need the consent of both partners, we don't 
marriage. We're saving the idea of love, ladies and gentlemen. We don't see why that marriage has to be there if they are unhappy. If they are unhappy, ladies and gentlemen, we shouldn't let that marriage end. Because we don't see, we need to look at the individual interest, but also the collective interest. Because since the first speaker, we told you how this actually affects the children in the first place. We need to actually make sure that those children are not going to see their parents actually being unhappy because we think that that traumatizes them at the end of the day. So we do see that license strengthens their relationship and has no effect on happy couples. So with side proposition, ladies and gentlemen, we're making sure that those marriages are actually going to prosper and have uh, is going to actually benefit the society. And we're actually saving those abusive relationships because we see that opposition never provided an effective mechanism and never showed us on what is the clear deterrence or what is actually making those women going to the police. If they don't report it, we don't see any at all. We don't think that status quo works. We need that license since works. So if you go with love, you need to go with proposition. Thank you.